would like to now introduce our speaker for today, Reverend Sharon Flynn. Reverend Flynn has been a chapel member since 1994 and has been an ordained minister with the Metaphysical Chapel of Life since 2002. She hosts our regular solstice and equinox celebrations, which are wonderful. Um, her prior career as a radiology special technologist of 25 years helped shape her natural healing abilities and her understanding of the human form. Sharon, Sharon now owns and operates hypnosis and healing centers in this area. Her past near-death experiences and expanded spiritual experiences helped guide her on the path of alternative healing modalities and the facilitation of change and soul growth for others. She's blessed with three grown married children, two sons and a daughter, and has three grandsons and one granddaughter. All right, welcome Sharon. Thanks. Sunday morning. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So I always start off with prayer. So um, let us just take a moment and take in a breath and just release the breath out, coming into union with everyone. So let us pray. Father, Mother, God, Heavenly Creator, I ask for the connection to be made to the higher self. And as we connect, we invite and invoke the presence of the angels the guides, and all loving beings of the light that are here to assist us today in that connection to that inner wisdom. I ask that I be used as the purest form of this channel, of this work, and that this be done for the free will, for the good of all, in the Christ's light, and in the Christ name. Amen. All right. <clears throat> it's great to be here. I had a whole week off, um, and it was very interesting because I'm so connected to doing my work at Actually, it was a very nice break, <laughs> gardening and cleaning and doing things. So it feels really good to um, reconnect to a group of people that I was a little on the isolated side. So my talk today is how to create a deep connection to your inner world or your soul. So I was drawn to talk about this, um, of how to connect. Um, Loretta's um, meditation was amazing because it just goes right in sync with my talk. <laughs> of course, it always does here. <laughs> so each one of us has a method um, that we connect. Um, each one can literally um, create your own method of connecting with meditation. It doesn't necessarily need to be meditative. It can be that you just quiet your mind. Um, you could do dishes, you could do your laundry, you could do your yard work, and you would be connected to spirit. So there's so many different ways that people do it um, in that connection. So each one of us is basically responsible for finding our way to our inner self. Pretty much that's our mission. That's why we're here. Um, and we find our way to our own inner self, but that is the way to the source or God, um, which we are connected to. So that is our mission. And I believe it's also our journey to that inner place of being in that inner home. And that when we get connected to the inner home is where our deepest um, connection to our soul resides. <clears throat> A lot of people in this world um, don't think about connecting to that quiet stillness um, so I'm so glad that each one of you were here to literally um, connect to that inner part of you. And that's where you're going to find the inner insights of who you are. So we are beautiful, beautiful beings of light that have experienced many, many things um, on this earth. And, but that, the way I look at it, that we are completely, our, we come in with a contract, we come in with that connection, and probably between the ages of zero and seven, we always are in the alpha state. Um, that means that we have, um, you know, basically always connected to the Christ consciousness. After seven, we start to pull away from that somewhat. Um, and if you look at the chakras, it's very interesting. The first chakra is the root center. 
And that is what you develop between the ages of zero and seven. And then every seven years, you move up to the next chakra and the next chakra and the next chakra. <clears throat> so I just wanted to, it's a very, and once you get to the top of your crown, you start all over again. <laughs> oh, so, so I'm just going to, since we were, she was very good at talking about the chakras, I'm just going to, so the first chakra is about being stable, secure, and connected to your your physical form, the sacral plexus, I'm, I'm sorry, um, yeah, the sacral plexus, sacral is connected to the word sacredness, so the sacredness of your creativity is the belly button area, <clears throat> then you move up to the solar plexus, which is right by your ribs, and that area is gaining your own power, so your seven um, moving up to the sacral, then you go to the 14, and then of course you're in at 21, you're gaining your power. So it makes sense. Then you're going to go into your heart, which is when you're around 28. Then you're going to go into the throat, which is your voice, which is also leading you to that inner power. And then your third eye, and then your crown. So it goes all the way up to 49, and then you start again. <laughs> so um, that was kind of a sidebar. For some reason, um, I was guided to share that information. Um, so, but we have, we, this is a very, very special time. We chose to come in here to this new earth to raise up a higher frequency for uh, ourselves and for the whole connection to the earth. So the earth is now moving into a new beginning. And most of us can feel the change, which is an ongoing energetic energy around us. It may feel that you are exhausted one day, and the next day you're going to have all this energy. Um, it's easier and easier and easier to meditate now. Um, and to really look in somebody's eyes and know that they are authentic and connected. Um, so I would say this vibration is coming in and influence, uh, influencing us. So there, there was a, I would call it, you know, the movie Matrix. Well, I believe that there was an old Matrix and a new one is being established right now. So the old Matrix is being dissolving. So if anybody's like, I don't know myself, I'm kind of feeling lost. I'm feeling um, just off. You know, the old world is starting to fade and change. And we have to be in that connection to spirit to continue to create this new matrix. So you're basically right now creating a new matrix of light around you. And this light that's coming in is a crystalline energy. <clears throat> and it is the direct source of God. Um, and I like the way that uh, Loretta used the light as that connection. I think that's the most, one of the most important things that we can do for ourselves is get connected to that crystalline energy. We're actually coming into our own power, basically. So the crystal energy will start to enhance our abilities. I'm sure all of you have noticed that you have an increasing intuition, um, increasing empathic abilities, which means that if you sit down to somebody next to somebody and all of a sudden you felt anxious and you were feeling fine before, that's your empathy. You're taking in information from others um, in your art field and realizing that you know, some people may not realize that you're doing that. Uh, most people here are probably high sensitives and high empaths. And then empathic abilities and increasing your sensitivities can be a blessing and not so much because it's going to be more and more difficult to be around people if you don't know that you're pulling in other people's energy. And one of the ways you can do that is actually imagine that you have a tube of light around you. And in that tube of light, it's always continuously flowing those particles of light. So every breath you bring in, you're transmuting the other vibrations that um, and resistances from other people, their feelings, 
and then you're transmuting them and then you're sending it, if you would, down into the earth. I like 300 feet above me for the tube, 300 feet below and 11 feet in diameter. Um, and I, one of the ways you can create that is actually just step outside in the light of the sun, especially the morning when it comes in and you can just create that tube. You don't even have to be outside. Um, to create that tube and continue to let it flow in and flow out with each and every breath. You set it up every morning and you've got this continuous flow of wisdom, knowledge, connection to source, and it will help you flow throughout the day much easier. <clears throat> I'll go over some of the other things, um, but know that this light is increasing our sensitivities and it's amazing. As I said, it has another side. So um, I'm sure people have noticed that you don't want to go out as much. Um, you don't want to be in crowds as much. Um, and I'm super, super sensitive to sound now. Um, noise, I call it. Um, so it it does change your 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 old patterns, if you would. So as you know that these, uh, as this awareness of your abilities start to increase, you'll also notice that you'll have the weaknesses also um, coming up in, in, I call it as your homework. Um, that may mean that um, your weaknesses are, I mean, it can be that you're taking everybody very personally and you didn't normally do that. Or you, there's a hundred million things that your weaknesses, we all know our weaknesses. So one of the things that we're here to do is to know ourselves and know our abilities. Um, and those abilities um, can be enhanced if we focus on increasing them. Um, let's say your ability is that you're very good at organizing um, and you can you know, know that that's uh, one of your abilities. On the other hand, you can know your your weaknesses as taking on too much for everybody else. You're always doing, doing, doing for other people. And that needs to be shifted. So we've got a balance within us, a positive um, taking in for ourselves as well as hanging out, sort of like an inner cup. If you continuously fill that inner cup within you um, through meditation, through exercise through, you know, things that you love to do, things that are just lovely, that make you feel happy, then you have your inner cup filled. If you think other people are going to be responsible for that, no, they're not. You're responsible for filling that inner cup. And also, it's, it's sort of like a bank account. Whatever you give to yourself, you're going to be able to have a surplus of giving to others. So, those are, those are some of the things that you can shift into and be aware of because it's going to help you become more of a, um, a continuous flow of light um, for others as well as for yourself. But you have to give to yourself first. So I tend to be a very much of a global thinker. Um, I can feel the shifts of the vibrations around this earth, um, especially through other people that I see during you know, my healing sessions. And everybody generally comes in with the same thing. Of course, that's been going on for a long time. I remember it being an x-ray tech and I got to x-ray knees all day or backs or elbows. <laughs> it was pretty much a thing. Um, so we are all very, very interconnected. And so, but we're also interconnected to the earth. And so if you look at that part of you that you can hold a higher vibration and just walk through um, the grocery store and leave this positive vibration everywhere you go, it's going to influence collectively to this earth. This earth is very important. It's the earth is basically shifting us little at a little time, um, when we feel off, we feel lost, we feel out of sorts. The earth is sort of like our cradle, if you really look at it. If you walk through a field or you walk through a forest or you just sit in your backyard, um, 
the earth has a matrix around it and it is being influenced by all this crystalline light. So as it's coming in, it's already absorbed it, it's already shifted it, and we can then connect to the earth and let Mother Earth give us this big hug and, and get connected to it. Um, so just sitting out in the sun, just for a brief time, we'll connect you. Um, walking, I like talking to the trees. I have my favorite trees. <laughs> I have my favorite little places I go, and that really grounds me, and that really fills me to a place of inner joy. Um, and I walk very slowly because I got two dogs that pull me in one direction and the other. So, <laughs> um, so just even putting your back up against a tree is, and just communicate. Okay, what do you need to tell me today? What can I receive from you today? And they just give you all this positivity. Animals do too. I'm sure somebody's noticed that the communication between the connection to earth, the connection to animals, the connection to God's critters is what I call them. I have a com continuous communication with a squirrel <laughs> lately. <laughs> <laughs> He's making a mess of my, my backyard. Um, and you know, you communicate with them and they they can they are communicating much more. And um, I've had success in communicating with um, those wood roaches and water bugs lately. I've told them to stay out of my house and they've done a very good job. <laughs> So, um, yeah, uh, just give you a little, ex just, I was just stunned that this squirrel um, loves the bird food, of course, um, and I put the bird food in a plastic tub, you know, those gray tubs, it locked, and that daggone thing <laughs> chewed a ring around the plastic to get into the bird food. He did not make it. <laughs> But I had pieces of plastic everywhere. <laughs> so notice that you can communicate with this earth and the, the, the little animals on it. Um, and they will give you gifts, <laughs> lots of them. <laughs> so let's look at our, our gifts that we came here to give to ourselves, to give to others. And everyone has a different gift. Everyone can utilize and enhance it as much as possible. It's the gift you can give yourself, time for yourself. That is an amazing gift right now, is to give yourself time, time with yourself. That's what that whole week was this week. Um, in meditation, yard work, um, quiet stillness will allow you to feel that connection. Um, some, um, some people are drawn to enhance their gifts by giving to others, which is wonderful, um, or sharing your wisdom or utilizing action and service for the greater good of all. There's a hundred million things you can do to be of service. And that's one of our main things here at the chapel is to be of service to others. So we are now in a time of big change. Um, this change equates to spiritual growth, as I said, self-expansion, self-knowingness, self-love, and really self-compassion. Um, I heard the other day, I don't even know where it was, but um, it was some kind of podcast I listened to, and they talked, they were talking about self-talk, your inner dialogue, and how brutal we can be to ourselves. And the expression was, if if it was it was a man, he was he said, if I talk to my wife the way I talk to myself, she would throw me out. <laughs> so be kind and gentle. Be aware of the negative self-talk. That generally comes in from connection to ego. Um, we have an ego mind and we have a heart-centered mind. And the ego mind will be your worst enemy. But to understand that we are moving into a new time, means that the ego is connected to the false matrix and it is dissolving. So I will tell you, it's going to resist 
dissolving. Mm -hmm. So the homework is, is that you're, you may have more um, experience of having the negative self-talk. Um, it's very easy to change that. All you have to do is go into your heart, feel the gratitude, the thankfulness of being here, anything in your life you're really grateful and thankful for, and it will shut that door up there in that ego mind. I always say it's up there um, because ego mind always comes when we are in a place of intellectual thinking. Um, so when we get so connected to, let's say we have a technical job and we identify ourselves as the role that we, um, we are at work and then you don't see any value of yourself. Um, you get all caught up in that that role that we play, um, and we have a, we all wear different hats. So be aware that when you are in that intellectual role, you know, give yourself a break or what, away from that and go back to your heart center. One of the I know I know I've seen said this thousands of times, um, but when I talked about the tube of light, I create that tube of light every day when I wake up in the morning <clears throat> and one of the things I do with that too is that I ask for it to guide everything I do every every thought every every action every decision um every word that I say and it works it works um so I just go into my first I have gratitude and then I ask for that connection and then it just flows so this is one of the ways you can open that inner doorway of getting to know yourself more um, and stay in that heart center. The more we're adding to that positive influence within ourselves, that's going to radiate out to this earth and to the community. Um, <clears throat> and we're also coming to a time where it's very vital to use our inner radar and connect to what's best for us. Um, because if we have that inner cup that's full, we can give to others. It's a time where our intuition, our guidance is what steers our world and what governs us, connection, our you know, connection to wisdom. So I see a new world coming. Oh, I love that. It's a wonderful world um, song. Um, thank you, Trish, for playing that. And when we create that inner world, that's a wonderful world. We I mean, just walk in with so much more light in places. We connect to a happier influence with some difficult family members, whatever, whatever is difficult in your life. You'll notice that if you stay guided, um, if they, your, your actions and your choices and your words, you will find that things settle down and people, you'll find the commonality with them. Um, so as we come into this new time, we're going to have a sovereignty. Um, that means that we are responsible for ourselves and responsible to keep that positivity going around us. And it's going to be an amazing new world because can you imagine a world where everybody is um, sensitive and high intuitive and we wouldn't want to hurt even a fly, you know, we would be really, really connected to each other. And we are one, we are the oneness of God within us. We hold that high vibration light. So that high vibration light is going to be mirrored to other people and um, change, change the world. The world's going to start to change. Um, so, <clears throat> so we need to have <clears throat> things awakened within us to allow this wisdom to steer us for this new time. Oh, so what? Um, June 21st, we did the summer solstice here. Um, I don't know. I noticed that that energy was so strong that it continued for several days. And it was a blast of crystalline energy. And from what I understood, Stan, there were a group of planets lined up and there was also <clears throat> the central sun and the sun all lined up and it was beaming a beautiful large amount of light into a portal. A portal is kind of a doorway to connect 
to the earth. A portal is a doorway um, that allows, it's hard to, it's sort of like chakras in our energy field. The earth has chakras and they have minor ones and middle ones and they have big ones. Um, Mount, Sh um, uh, Mount Shasta is one of the biggest portals in the United States. They, ha they have portals all over the world. Well, anyways, the, um, so this, the way this was all lined up, it hit a portal into where um, the source is anchored into the world. And actually that was a place in Iraq and Iran. It was right in the middle between the two countries. And it sent this light to anchor into the earth more. So, and what it also did was that it sent a massive influx of light across the earth because it hit a humongous pocket of gold in the earth. And when it hit that um, pocket of gold, it lit up all the gold <laughs> all over in the earth. So um, I've talked about the Schumann resonance before. It's the frequency of the earth. And you can go and look up Schumann um, resonances, S-C-H-U-M-A-N-N. -N. Um, and that day, that light hit that portal, Schumann resonance looked completely different. It was just a massive change in the earth. <clears throat> and I think it's gone, it's, it's probably gone back to um, the, the way it usually looks now, but that was a very, very, very lifting light that was coming in. So the light is helping us to move forward and it's affecting everything on this planet. So what can we do and what can we use this time for to fully bring in the advantage and what's good for all? <clears throat> well, the first and foremost is that take care of yourself. Um, be kind and gentle to yourself. Um, give yourself enough rest because as we go through this ascension process, we're going to go through, um, like I said, ups. Energetic level is going up, energetic level is going down. So rest, connect to earth, um, and some other things that I didn't mention is, you know, look for <clears throat> your inner truth. Right now, it's very confusing to know what is true, what any kind of truth is going on right now. We're changing. So our belief system is also going to be changing about ourselves and the world. Um, be open to receive insights and messages when you're quiet and in stillness. Um, use techniques such as music or sound to focus on. When, when people come into my office, I have, in, let's say somebody says, I can't meditate at all. I go, hold on a second. Let me, let's do a little, you know, uh, process. So I have crystal singing bowls and I hit the singing bowl and I tell them to listen to the singing bowls until they don't hear it anymore. And then I do it three times. So they had right there about a minute, three minutes of meditation because you're focused on something else and you are quiet and still in your mind. So music or sound is something really wonderful to focus on. Chanting. You know, we, as we say prayers or we chant, we're focusing on what we're doing at that moment. <clears throat> One of there's a woman named Diva Pramel, P R E M A L, Diva. Um, she does this one chant that's called the Gyatra Mantra. And I could, what it is, is that it's the first chant that was created supposedly in our history. Um, so it really means that God's light is around us, through us, and in us. And um, this chant is, is usually, um, each the verse is sung 108 times. And so it's a nice long meditation. And once you know those words, you cannot stop singing that. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so chanting, it could be O Mati Pati Om. I mean, it could be very simple. It could be something as a, uh, Reverend Bill Whitley, he calls it an earworm because you hear the same music over and over in your head and continuously. And that's a wonderful way to meditate. Um, 
So the other way to get connected is just focus on your breath coming in and out. And you could do that driving down the road. Oh, by the way, you're in a meditation driving, by the way. You know, you're in an alpha state. So, and have you ever noticed that you get to your de designation and you go, I don't remember what I did. How did I get here? <clears throat> Love that. Um, so um, use your feelings as a way to focus. Oh, I'm feeling sad today. Go into your sadness. Go into your inner place and, you know, present your, your, your heart gratitude. I'm, I'm grateful for feeling sad today. And the more you focus on it, the more it's going to go away. <laughs> it's not going to be there. Um, one of my favorite things to do is actually have no thought in my head. I spend four or five hours a day with no thought. Um, when I say that, it's just I'm I'm in you know session, so it's all quiet. So I'm receiving messages for everybody else. Um, so use um, so one of the ways that I do um, house chores and thing gardening. Just quiet your mind when you do it. You you know what you're going to be doing. So it doesn't need to have thought patterns. Um, be grateful and thankful. Connect to your heart. But this is a wonderful, wonderful time to go outside, especially in the evening or in the morning or whenever. Birds are always singing. They don't sing so much in the evening. But those crickets and those frogs <laughs> will sing you a lullaby. And by the way, um, somebody recorded the crickets years ago. And I, it might still be on YouTube, but they slowed the cricket sound down and it was the sound of hallelujah. So, and the last but not least, get in, get in water, um, do a spa bath, do a detox um, in this, you know, put Epsom salts and different things that you can, you know, clean your body out with. Detoxing actually would enhance any of your intuitiveness um, because it can interfere with your um, third eye. Your third eye holds the pineal gland and the pituitary in a little uh, cradle that's called the cella tarsica. I used to take x-rays or I see through things. Um, and a lot of times the metals that we are exposed to can literally um, take the pineal gland and kind of uh, Calcify. So if you uncalcify your, and you could do that by many, many things, but just there's tons of metal detoxes. Um, you just take, usually you take uh, black walnut hulls and different things. You can, I mean, just drinking a lot of water with lemon in the morning will cleanse out your liver, which will help your body detox. So, <clears throat> so those are just a few things that I would suggest about, you know, going back to your inner self um, connecting to that love for you, because that's the more all of us do that, the more we're all going to resonate at a higher frequency and bring this higher connection between all of us. So we are the light of the creator. We bring it to us. We ask it to guide us, everything we do. And as we connect to that guidance, we can be connected to everyone here, animals, the earth, even those little water bugs, uh, big water <laughs> bugs. Um, so communicate, pre-create what you want for the day, pre-create that feeling of, you know, feelings are the most powerful, powerful, powerful connection to your source. Because when we feel it, we're not storing it. We're not uh, putting it in a drawer and, and just collecting our feelings. So we need to feel our feelings and as we, it has more energy. So if you want to manifest something, you're going to feel that, that you want to manifest and the vision comes in and great, but does it necessarily mean, I, I see it as like the feelings are 75% um, movement and the 25 for the visual. Now we have all these different senses in our body. Um, you know, we've got the five senses, six sense, really. Um, so use the senses, your powerful senses. So let's say uh, I ask you to visualize a beach. Well, you're not a visual. You're not going to do that, but you can feel the sun. You can feel yourself walking on the beach. You can. So 
fine tune your meditations and your connection to source with your uh, gifts, if you would. If you are a feeler or kinesthetic is what it's called. If you are a visual, then, well, I love doing hypnosis on people that have all five senses. <laughs> it's so easy. Because <laughs> um, you got you to gotta fine tune as meditation and hypnosis is very similar. It's the same state of mind. One has a a, a, a therapy with it. Um, so utilize, and you can you can also connect to the auditory. If you are very high auditory, then you're going to feel and hear the waves coming in. Um, so you can, and the other one is um, the smell. Uh, can't think of it. And um, the if you have a gift with smells, you can go, oh, I know what the, the beach smells like. It smells, you know, seaweedy. <laughs> <laughs> and actually, you have a lot of um, positive ions out there because that does make a difference. So use your use your inner self. You know, if you closed your eyes and you could visualize, then you were probably the highest on the visual. If you closed your eyes and you can feel your kinesthetic. Um, and then go down the line of your different senses and, and just fine tune that to that connection to source. So meditation is all going to lift us up. It's going to lift up the planet. It's going to connect us and unite us. And uh, there will be peace on earth. And I guarantee it. <laughs> so many, many blessings to each one of you. Um, you are a leader for this earth. You're here today. You're here on this earth for exploring your own inner um, reality and creating and basically sharing your light and sharing your love. And so everyone here is a leader and um, what you do can affect others. So know that that power is in your hands. And I'll give you with that, I'm sending you all blessings and go for it. Go get, go put positivity around the world. Thank you very much for allowing me to share.